Hello, everyone. I wanted to share some thoughts about the last Aristotle reading. This video will focus on the first part of it, where he returns to a subject that he's already covered, but is such an important one that I suppose he believes that there's more to be said, and that is the subject of pleasure. Um, and two questions. I mean, one he's returning to is pleasure the good? And remember, good in the sense of sense of, you know, is the life of pleasure the good life? Is, is, is pleasure the ultimate good, the greatest good? Is it that which we should aim at in our lives? He's returning to that question, a question that he's introduced before. I remember in the reading where he says, well, people have this idea, people have different ideas about what the summum bonum is, the greatest good. Some people say it's pleasure, some people say it's honor, some people say it's contemplation or knowledge. So he's already covered this. Um, but these being, the Nicomachean ethics is really, supposedly, are, it's really the Aristotle's lecture notes. So things aren't always presented in a polished way. You know, they're kind of like just the notes that he kept for himself for, for his teaching. I don't know if that's true or not, but it would account for why, you know, it's kind of written in the way it is. Uh, so that's a, a question that he returns to. Well, I mean... Is pleasure the good? But there's another question that he raises, which is obviously a related question. And then, what is pleasure? If it's very Socratic, you know, Socrates would agree. Well, if we're going to ask whether pleasure is the greatest good, well, we should know what pleasure is. Do we really know what it is? Do we really understand this seemingly very familiar phenomenon of pleasure? Uh, well, I mean, the, the, the first thing that he says, or one of the first things he says in this reading is, you know, pleasure is undoubtedly incredibly important in human life. Um, you simply cannot ignore uh, the importance of both pleasure and pain. Uh, he starts the reading by saying, after these matters, we ought perhaps next to discuss pleasure, for it is thought to be intimately connected with our human nature, which is the reason why, in educating the young, we steer them by the rudders of pleasure and pain. Um, you, you, you know, that, that is uh, pleasure and pain, feeling enjoyment, feeling pleasures of different sorts, and, and suffering and pain are incredibly, they're just facts of human life. And I think one of the things that Aristotle is acknowledging is that uh, people will tend to gravitate towards pleasure and they will tend to avoid pain. I mean, this is a seemingly ineradicable part of our nature as organisms, as animals. Um, and it is built into this whole idea of moral virtue we've been talking about. I mean, in, in a certain respect, if we call virtue a habit, it's a matter of training ourselves to feel pleasure and pain at the right things. So a moral education would be largely the formation of character. So we naturally gravitate towards that which, which feels right. And we naturally uh, avoid that which feels wrong. So that moral training in a certain way, and maybe it sounds paradoxical, is learning how to feel pleasure and pain at the right things. As he says, you know, a courageous person actually enjoys doing courageous things. A generous person actually enjoys being generous. And it would be painful to do something cowardly to a courageous person. It would be painful to be miserly to a general. So in a certain respect, pleasure and pain are sort of built into the whole thing, right, in terms of actually getting the virtues. Uh, so... Um, but that is perhaps a distinct question from the question of whether uh, pleasure is the, 
the end of life, whether pleasure is the, you know, the maximization of pleasure. And I really think he's thinking of physical pleasures as well as other sorts of pleasures. Is that really um, uh, the, the, the point of life? Is it the greatest good? Um, and he refers here to an earlier philosopher named Eudoxus, who did say that pleasure was a good. And, and one of the reasons that Eudoxus thought that pleasure was a good be is because everything alive moves towards its proper pleasure. Uh, see, naturally seeks out pleasure. It's just, it's just built into us and to all living things. So uh, that would seem to be something speaking for the idea that pleasure is the ultimate good, is the greatest good. Another thing that he says here, uh, and this is important, I think, it's right here. He says, and again, that is most an object of choice, which we choose not because or for the sake of something else. And pleasure is admittedly of this nature, for no one asks to what end he is pleased, thus implying that pleasure is in itself an object of choice. That is, remember when he was talking about the, you know, the greatest good, that, that which um, could, could serve as being you know, the aim of a whole life in the beginning of the, the, the first reading. And he says that the greatest good would be something that we always choose for its own sake, never for the sake of something else. Um, and he says, well, you know, happiness fits the bill because we always want happiness for its own sake, never for the sake of something else. It, it never, it just doesn't make sense to say, I want to be happy because I want something else. Uh, happiness is an intrinsic good. So we should, we always say, I just want to be happy period, and everyone knows what we mean. But but pleasure seems to be something that we want for its own sake, too. So it's actually a pretty strong candidate for why, for, you know, for an, a, a, an answer to the question, what is the greatest good? And Aristotle seriously considers it. Seriously, he says, well, it, it, it's got a lot going for it in terms of saying, well, the end of life, the ultimate end, the ultimate good, the greatest good is pleasure. But he ultimately rejects it. Why? Well, that, you know, that's a matter of the, the second question there. You know, what is pleasure? And he has a really fascinating discussion here about, about pleasure. Um, and I, I think the upshot of, of it is, is, strictly speaking, and I want to qualify this very heavily and say that I mean it in a particular way, because of course we do seek pleasure, but more particularly, sorry, we seek pleasurable activities. Let us think of something that you, that you want, that think of, think of enjoyment. Uh, very rarely and very superficially does enjoyment just come from sitting there you know, um, some purely physical pleasure like a drug or something like that. I mean, this is not really, you know, we get pleasures from doing things. That is, we, we seek pleasure, but in the form of pleasurable activities. Um, think about something like playing a game. Uh, whether it's a computer game or, you know, an athletic game. Um, I'm, I'm going to admit something to you. Uh, there was an old game, an online game called Team Fortress 2, and I played it for about two years, pretty heavy, and I derived a lot of enjoyment from it. I mean, I really, I just loved playing TF2, playing Team Fortress 2, and, you know, I must have been the oldest Team Fortress 2 fan in the world, but I, I loved it. I, I loved playing the game, and, and I spent a lot of hours playing the game. Um, but I, I didn't do it to feel pleasure. I did it because I wanted to do something in the game. And it was the doing of the activity that gave me pleasure. So that's an important thing. I mean, if, if, if you like playing uh, basketball, which is another thing I loved earlier in, in, in my life, you don't say, well, I want to go play basketball because I want to feel pleasure. 
because I want to feel enjoyment. No, you, you, you go play basketball because you, you want to play basketball. And, um, you know, you, you know that playing it will give you enjoyment. Um, at least, you know, when you are lucky enough to actually hit a jumper once in a while. I mean, you know, um, but even that's part of the enjoyment of it. I mean, missing, I mean, it hurts, but it hurts in the right way, right? Um, so well, the reason I'm, I'm, I'm giving these examples is that if we're asking, you know, The reason I think that Aristotle says that it can't, the answer can't be pleasure is because pleasure is something that occurs when we are focused on something other than pleasure. We're focused on hitting the jumper or we're focused on, I don't know, stupid computer games. Actually, they're not so stupid. I like computer games and, you know, you know, like solving problems. I played my share of Portal. I was pretty bad at it, but um, you know, you're, you're focused on solving the problem. You're not focused on, oh, I want to feel pleasure right now. You're focused on, well, how do I, how do I get out of this room? Or uh, you're not focused on, oh, I really want to feel pleasure right now. You're, you're focused on, say you play chess, you're focused on, you know, how do I set up a mating net? or something, or how do I avoid getting mated myself? And, and you're, you're concentrated on that. You're focused on that. You're pursuing that. You're not pursuing pleasure. You're pursuing some activity or some end or, or, or something that ends up giving you pleasure, but it's not the, the, it's not the pleasure that is the focus. So um, I think that that's a really pretty good account of what pleasure is, is that pleasure is incredibly important in human life. I think that he's right. The whole point of molding your character is to try to learn how to feel pleasure and pain at the things that you consider proper, right? Um, say that you're a sadist. Uh, say that you find yourself finding pleasure in other people's pain. You know what? That's really shameful and wrong. Uh, but it happens. Uh, so what you should do is to try to change your character, to try to change your habits so you no longer feel pleasure at that because it's wrong. Uh, say that, you know, you want to feel pleasure at reading. You, you, you want to be a literate person. So you want to feel actually feel pleasure at reading a Shakespeare play or, or actually, uh, you, you know, uh, watching your performance of a Shakespeare play. Well, guess what? That doesn't happen without some effort. Uh, it happens once you start reading Shakespeare and getting into it and you learn how to follow the language and you, know, you get into the stories. It's incredibly pleasurable, but it takes focus, you know, you, and, it, and it takes habituation. You want to you actually have to learn. It's what education is really is kind of learning how to appreciate things that at first are kind of boring and off putting, perhaps. Um, like, you know, reading Plato, maybe, you know or philosophy classes, the more you do it, the more pleasurable it becomes. I mean, when I say that Aristotle wants us to feel pleasure and pain at the right things, I'm really thinking of, of that sort of thing where we change our habits. In any case, um, the, the second point here, what is the greatest good? Why isn't it pleasure? Uh, Aristotle provides a, a pretty interesting answer, and that is, well, pleasure isn't the goal. Pleasure is something that happens as we're pursuing goals. You know, so it, it in itself, really is not a good candidate uh, for an answer to the question, what is the greatest good? 